In 1954, the French were defeated at Dien Bien Phu and Vietnam was divided in two with the Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Minh taking over the northern part down to the 17th parallel and the French retaining the south from the 17th parallel downward. So I arrived on August the 8th, 1954, two days before my 25th birthday. The Geneva Accords had occurred, the country was being divided in two, and the South was really in chaos. When we moved to Saigon, we had no housing, my father had no job, and we were not the only refugees for North Vietnam. There were something like 800,000 to a million refugees from the North who had fled communism or the Viet Minh to move south. And a lot of them, the majority of them, were Catholics. There were uh, lots of planes flying up empty and then bringing refugees back, so I just took on a little flight. And I noticed a group of refugees standing on one side of the apron, obviously waiting for a flight. And so I started asking, why were they fleeing? And out of the crowd, in almost a chorus, was, we don't, you know, we're afraid that the communists will kill us. Dwight Eisenhower and his administration make a decision, in a sense, to try to succeed where the French have failed. So they're going to create a non-communist bastion in the southern part of Vietnam in order to preserve at least part of Indochina from succumbing to communism. I tell them, we will help you. What else could I say? That became part of my motivation for becoming so involved with the Vietnamese. And I like to explain that in a way of saying that I felt I became sort of a, a brother of the Vietnamese who wanted to keep uh, what remained of their country free. So the domino theory, which Dwight Eisenhower articulated famously at a press conference in April of 1954, is a theory that argues that if one country falls, if one domino falls to communism, then all the other countries in that area will also topple. You have a row of dominoes set up and you knock over the first one and uh, what will happen to the last one is uh, the certainty that it'll go over uh, very quickly. So you could have a beginning of a disintegration that would have the most profound influence. I'll never forget my surprise in seeing in Russian archives the Chinese explaining the domino theory to the Russians as a way of arguing why Hanoi should be supportive. Both sides believed in the fragility of, of these new states. Ngo Dinh Diem was a Catholic from central Vietnam. He has a reputation throughout Vietnam as being a very nationalist and anti-French figure. One of the enduring myths about Ngo Dinh Diem is that he was installed in power in 1954 as Prime Minister of South Vietnam by the United States. Diem was certainly aware that the communists and his other critics referred to his government as Mi Y Diem, which in Vietnamese means America Diem. And he really chafed against this. He took steps to try to demonstrate that he was not going to do Washington's bidding. The National Army was in disarray. There were a couple of other religious sects who had armies who were also sort of vying for power. So almost immediately, plotting started in with the Army Chief of Staff to overthrow Zim. Zim believed that, that he could defeat these rivals and, and consolidate his authority on his own. He provoked a showdown with, with some of the rival groups in, in the spring of 1955. He defeated them in the Battle of Saigon, and, and he went on to establish his authority over most of South Vietnam's territory. And he was greeted by enormous and very happy crowds, because the word had gone out that, in effect, he was getting independence for the South as well as the North. The most optimistic moment in Vietnam was in 1956, when the republic had been declared, when the constitution had been adopted, when the National Assembly was elected. They had 
parades, the people walking out in the streets. I mean, it was just an air of, of happiness. It sort of gave me a deep sense of satisfaction about all the work that we had been involved in with the Vietnamese to get to that point. Given all the difficulties that they faced at the very beginning, uh, right after Geneva. It was some kind of miracle that South Vietnam even survived. Basically, the United States was, was feeding us and clothing us and protecting us with an army and giving us a functioning government. So the United States was, in a way, succeeded in nation building. Of course, this was interrupted by the insurgency of the Viet Cong. But um, at the beginning, it was successful.